Hey everybody, welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle, and in this week's video, we're gonna talk about why are superdorbs so expensive? This is a question we get all the time. Let's put it into perspective for you. So when you're looking to get into any kind of uh, purchase, you know, there's price and then there's value. In my opinion, value is king. Let me show you a little bit of uh, an analogy so that you can see and understand what I'm talking about. Here's an analogy that kind of works like this. We're pretty frugal around here for our shop vehicles. And I have this 2009 minivan, and then I have this 2022 pickup truck. Nice little economy truck, very practical vehicles both. This one cost me $8,000, this one cost me about $23,000. So this one is nearly three times the price of that. Now I haven't had them very long, but in the past year, this uh, vehicle has cost me almost its purchase price in repairs. And now that I'm looking at it, it's uh, due for inspection again, which is great because I know I need new brakes again. So I have put an additional $8,000 into it for a total of like 16 grand to drive around a green minivan. This vehicle on the other hand is a new Ford Maverick. Everybody seems to like them. I get stopped, smiled, hey, how do you like that truck? That's pretty cool. It gets much better gas mileage. And all I've had to do is an oil change so far in the entire time I've had it. Plus I get to drive around, you know, like a cool little pickup truck with Apple CarPlay. So the experience of ownership has been far better in this vehicle and it really hasn't cost me that much more money so far. Uh, and I think honestly, this one's gonna catch up to that one in price pretty quick. Even though that was a little easier to get into and I've got a car payment on that one, I can tell you I'm enjoying the experience much more with that one. So just for funsies, we're gonna compare kind of the two extremes, right? I have a mainland platinum reticulated python named Karma. She was bought at a local reptile show years ago for 250 bucks. I also have some 93.75% Superdorf. That's four generations of breeding that platinum morph into Superdorf genetics, making them smaller and smaller and smaller. That's the highest percentage Superdorf we've gotten out of that morph. And after all of that time, a female from that clutch would be more than $2,000 more than that standard platinum. Now, you could get a platinum dwarf retic for probably five to 700 bucks, but just for the sake of argument, let's go with like the crazy expensive platinum Superdorf after four generations of Superdorf breeding versus the straight up mainland and take a look at the difference of what it would cost to have one of these guys. In order to do this though, obviously you guys do this all the time, you wouldn't just look at a snake and say, hey, that's price tag is how much money I have in my pocket and buy it at a re local reptile show, right? That would be impulsive buying and really doesn't consider all the factors. No, what you would wanna do is think, okay, how much is this gonna cost to cage? How much is this gonna cost to feed? And figure that out. Now, we, we don't wanna go over the course of our life, our numbers would be huge. But let's just take a look at, let's say if it's a female, we're gonna raise it up to sexual maturity when she's ready to breed, so four to five years. Take a look at some of those numbers, some of those uh, setups and what that might do. Okay, so our mainland karma, she's huge, much bigger than a retic typically gets, that's a given. And she's almost 20 feet long. But if I wanted to build her a cage that was long enough for her to stretch out once, it's gonna look something like this. We've got this 20 foot shipping container that we're building into this giant custom enclosure. Now I realize this is a little bit over the top and this is not something that everybody is expected to do, but the point remains that this is a snake, this is a cage that this snake can, you know, stretch herself out one time in. And if you have a much smaller snake, you get a much smaller cage. The problem is when you begin to go custom. Custom builds are outrageously expensive. When we go take a look at the numbers of actual differences, we'll go ahead and go with like the largest kind of readily accessible cage, but that's gonna be less than half of the length of that animal. So we'll compare that, but I wanted to show you sort of, if you really wanted to give them a cage they could stretch all the way out in, just what you're getting into here with a main one. Okay, here's kind of the caging that we're keeping a lot of the smaller super dwarves in. Now, this is a cage that we've developed ourselves, but for our price comparison, we'll go with the same company. 
with this type of size of a cage so that we can compare to that mainland. But obviously these cages are gonna cost quite a bit less. This is actually five cages high. I could have all five of these enclosures housing my five super dwarves and even this, which is a little bit of a kind of a vertical playground in a cave, it allows us to set them up naturalistically, get that animal to stretch out vertically, climb all around. I could have this whole stack with little doggy doors that go into my playground for still less than half the cost of Karma's cage. Actually a lot less. Then there's the cleaning. Definitely gotta think about that too. Then of course we get to food preparation. Now as hatchlings, the one that you might be buying from your local breeder, reptile show, what have you, they're eat, gonna eat similarly sized items and they're not gonna cost that much different. But obviously with a faster and larger growth rate of a mainland reticulated python, it's gonna move up in food size items very quickly. By the end of its first year, it will probably be eating, I know this is gross, frozen rats like this one, which is pretty disgusting. This is actually typically what we're feeding adult super dwarves as well, but that's only by the end of the first year with the mainland. Remember, we're bringing them all the way up to sexual maturity. So pretty quickly, just like with the caging, there's no more commercially available caging. You're gonna get to like human farming leftovers pretty quickly. This is kind of the standard feeder for a, a smaller mainland adult. This is a three pound fetal pig. Definitely even more disgusting than the rat is. But even a fetal pig like this is probably not gonna last you forever. In fact, Karma is almost 200 pounds. So if I'm gonna feed her, say, 15% of her body weight once every couple of months, that's gonna look like a 30 pound pig. So let's look at like the actual cost overall of these animals. We're gonna go ahead and assume four years of raising a female at standard feeding practices from rodents that are currently priced at Rodent Pro and cages from Animal Plastics. Now these are very, very minimal ones. Like I said, this is an eight by four by four cage for what, you know, in our example, we're using a 20 foot retic, but even if you had a 16 foot female, that's a cage that's only half as long as it is. And a four foot enclosure, I think we pulled a four by three by two, which is half the length of say an eight foot super dwarf. Um, let's take a look. So you'll remember that Karma actually cost 250 bucks as a baby, little platinum retic. And if you wanted the highest percentage Superdorf Platinum ever made, that's 93.75%, you're gonna add an extra two at the front of that. So it's gonna be like 2,250 for a female. Males would be a little bit less, but this is what we're going for, okay? Now, how much does it cost, very kind of standard thing, to feed that animal for four years and get them up to breeding uh, condition? I did the math for you guys. So the food on the mainland, is going to be about $1,891.25 over four years. The food on the Super Dwarf is going to be $422 over the same four years. That's scaling, you know, and assuming kind of those average growth rates like to get up to an eight foot snake or a 16 foot snake. Um, you probably wouldn't even hit six feet, 16 feet at the end of the year feeding 10 to 15% of their body weight. And this is what you end up with food. Now, I went through animal plastics, it's kind of like the industry standard for PVC cages. And um, I went ahead and kind of plugged in, you know, heat, light, obviously you need cage locks, stuff like that. Nothing fancy, just standard caging. And from them, you are going to get, uh, let's see, about, $1,575 for that half the length snake cage uh, on the mainland and about $515 for the same size cage there. Now, if we add those up, what we end up with here is, uh, what did we get? 3,400, 65, and $937 here, but, we gotta get those cages shipped unless we live next to them, right? So that's gonna add an extra $300 to freight out that big cage over here, giving us a grand total of 
$66.25. These are not, by the way, adding in purchase price, okay? This is just four years of care on a mainland starting in 2022. Um, you can actually watch back our other How Much Does a Superdoor video cost and see just how much prices have changed in the last four years because these things only go up. Um, and then on the Superdorf, it was 80 bucks to ship the cage. So you're looking at 1,017. Big difference here in the care of the numbers, and this is just for the first four years. So if you plan on your snake living 20 or 30 years, um, you've got a pretty big difference. If we subtract this and we look at what is our actual cost difference, assuming a free snake, then you're looking at an additional $2,700.49.25 additional more. So you guys can kind of look here and see if I add 1017 to this, then uh, let's see, my Super Dwarf, highest percentage Super Dwarf Platinum ever made. And uh, the cost to grow her up and breed her, you're looking at, what is this now? Three, watch out guys, I'm doing math on the fly. 32.67 total, snake, cage, food for four years. On the mainland over here, I've got to add 250 bucks to that. Oh, I'm over four grand. 4,000-ish. You guys can do the math, comment below, and you'll win at life. But uh, it's pretty plain to see that the Super Dwarf, even in this extreme example where we're going with like a lower end morph, um, for a snake like Karma to the highest end version of this Super Dwarf, the cost difference is still almost $1,000 different by the time you grow them up and breed them. Now consider this, if I just wanted a pet platinum, for example, a 50% Superdorf platinum, single gene male, probably gonna be around 500 bucks, not 2250. So it's only double the price here, but the numbers are gonna look a lot more like this, raising it. So that's a huge addition if you want a pet, you know, massive value proposition. Or if you wanted to breed, Remember that this animal is gonna produce babies that are probably worth about that much. Maybe more, maybe less, depending on what morphs they get. But if you say that the babies on average are gonna be over $2,000 a piece versus this animal here might have a few more babies, but on average, they're only gonna be $250 each. I don't know, the numbers don't lie, guys. The numbers do not lie. Oh, also, if you did get that $2,700 difference, assuming free animals, not only do you, could you put that animal, that money into a high-end animal, but you could get a way bigger cage. Imagine throwing an extra 2,700 bucks on top of that 500 for that minimum, and now you have like a castle for that snake. You could get awesome food. You could take a trip to go see where they come from in the wild. All kinds of things with that money that would improve the life of your animal if you're saying, hey, I don't really care about the money, Garrett. You could still go bigger by going smaller. Well, hopefully that puts in perspective kind of the cost of these animals so that you can think the term of the lifetime of what you're getting into, because that's definitely the kind of way you want to think as you get into any kind of a new pet. If you were clicking on this video, on the other hand, just to take a look at some of the actual prices for different generation sizes, all that kind of stuff. Oh my gosh, guys, it's all over the place. We've got a snake for you kind of regardless of what you're looking for. You're just going to have to Shoot us a message and let us know. We'll have a link in the description. You can get a hold of us at info at reachoutreptiles.com. That's it for this week. We'll catch you guys next time. This light is blinding. Do you see this light?